What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioWest 3 Raw TV. Today, we're going to do the Olympia prediction video. Now, I wrote down who, uh, as far as I know, I looked into it a little bit, not too much, but who I uh, know is competing. And I'm sure that there are other people that qualified in points that I'm not really sure of. Um, this is just the uh, the actual Mr. Olympia. This is not the 212, because I don't even know who's qualified for the 212. Besides, um, let's see, uh, Flex Lewis, of course, David Henry. The guys who place top five, I think, automatically um, are qualified for the next year. But let's go to the actual 50th anniversary, Mr. Olympia, coming up. Um, I got the top nine that I picked out that I feel like are going to be the top nine. Now, again, this is my opinion based on the fact that everyone comes in in perfect condition. Now, we saw before many times someone comes in a little bit off, off enough, and the other person comes in tight, super tight, full, hard, they're going to beat them. So any of these places could change. If Phil Heath comes in at 80% and Kai Green comes in at 100%, he very well could beat him. However, if Phil comes in 100% and Kai comes in 80%, Phil's going to beat him. Both at 100%, Phil beats him. I mean, that's just how it is. So I'm just using them for examples, but we'll go through these picks, and I'll tell you guys why I think um, these guys are going to place where they're going to place. First place, I'm picking Phil Heath to win again. Absolutely, hands down. Um, he seems to be bigger and fuller, and he's in really good shape for this far out. And his conditioning is not his Achilles heel ever. His, his thing is to make sure he's full. When he's full, all his muscles pop. They're round, they're full, they're three-dimensional. It's something that, you know, a lot of the other guys can't compete with um, as far as that roundness with his, you know, that, that 3D look that he has. So Phil Heath at 100% full, improved from last year, takes the Olympic. He would have to be really off being the champion for him to, to get knocked off. Kai. Now, Kai, I got him in second place. Kai Green again in second place. Now, some people think he's the uncrowned Mr. Olympia. Some people think he should beat Phil Heath. Now, I went to the Olympia last year, and I saw in person what these guys look like, and it's not what you guys see online, in pictures, in videos. It's not the same. There are details you can't see. There's three-dimensional look that you can't see. And Kai has more than enough mass, but he refuses to come down and get that razor-sharp look that Phil has in certain areas that, you know, they go, okay, big muscle, big muscle, okay, he's lean here, lean here. Now, where is the difference between Phil and Kai? These little tiny details that Kai may not have that Phil does, Kai's got more muscle, but Phil's got the conditioning, he's got the insertions, he's got all those things that, you know, the deep cuts in the insertions where they are, the things that Kai lacks that usually keeps him out of that number one spot. Now, he's been big as fuck all year, swole up, Kai has been huge, and when he stands by himself, he's in good condition, and he's huge, but the problem is, is the Olympia's still seven, eight weeks away. You're carrying around that much mass that, you know, you have to bring it down and get tight, and you've been that tight all year, is it possible when you start to push your body that last three, four, five weeks. I know I've seen it before myself and clients that the body sometimes doesn't do what you want it to do. You know, these guys like um, like Phil who took that entire year off and you saw him actually get smaller and, and a little bit, you know, I guess fatter. He's not fat, but a little bit fatter through the off season. Now all of a sudden he starts to respond as these days are starting to tick down towards the Olympia. It's a different, you know, I, I guess a different way of, of, you know, approaching it. But the bottom line is the fresher athlete's body is going to respond more than the one that's been pushing it. And, of course, Phil has less time in bodybuilding in general with the training and the drugs and everything that goes along with it. So I just don't see Kai being able to pull off a package that's going to be an improved Phil Heath when pretty much every time I, sec I think except at the Arnold where these two have met on stage, Phil has beaten him. So I just don't see that happening. Third place, Dennis Wolf. Now... Dennis, there's pictures up today. Today's like the um, 19th, 18th. What the fuck is the date today? Maybe the 20th of August, something like that. And uh, his face is already sucked out, super lean. Now, Dennis has that type of physique that when he nails it, he's very impressive. He doesn't have the fullness of a Kai Green or um, a Phil Heath. He has some hard, grainy look sometimes. Sometimes he's just lacking that little bit of pop, wow factor, or fullness. And it seems like he's gotten it the last couple times he competed. However, even the last couple times he competed at his 100% best, Kai and, and Phil have still beaten him. So unless he pulls something out that completely drastically changes his physique that he gives them a new look with, and I don't think it's just a matter of size. You know, Kai and Phil both have a structure and a roundness and fullness that 
Dennis really can't compete with. He doesn't have that genetically. He's got a hardness that the other guys don't, and it's just a different look. I feel like he's a taller bodybuilder, you know, even though he carries a lot more mass. Pound for pound, size-wise, they are actually thicker than Dennis is, and he comes in grainy dry. He's going to place top three. Um, again, now, if Kai is off, maybe Dennis could beat him. I mean, it just depends. I just don't see Dennis beating Phil for any reason. I mean, unless Phil is way off. Um, Sean Roden. I got Sean in fourth. Now, Roden has that fullness. He's got the great symmetry. He does lack size in his back, okay? He doesn't have the back size that it takes to be a Mr. Olympia. Now, I'm hearing reports that he's bigger than ever now. So it is possible that he brought up his back. Brings up the back and comes in with sharper condition. Not as good as before, but better than he's ever been before. He could beat Wolf, I think, and he's beaten him before plenty of times. He could beat Wolf and push himself up to that top, the, the top three spots. Could he give Kai a run for his money? If Sean has increased mass, I think he could give Kai a run for his money for second place. Um, I think Kai at 100% and Sean at 100%. Kai still is too overwhelming for Sean, size-wise, thickness-wise, and structure-wise. But I see uh, Roden in a solid fourth, and I don't see, unless he really fucks up, I don't think he'll be out of that top four, to be honest with you. Number five, a new runner, Justin Compton. Okay? I have seen this guy in person. He is impressive as fuck. He is gigantic. And he gets in super razor sharp condition. He has good symmetry. He's thick as a brick. And he poses well. I mean, there's really no knocks on this guy other than the fact that he doesn't have that fullness and that roundness and that symmetry that Phil and Kai have. That's it. I mean, other than that, you know, I think that he could, in his 100% condition, if Sean is off and Wolf is off, I think he easily could jump over both of those guys and get third place if the, the wounds are aligned. I just, I don't see him... Because he's fairly new, he's a young gun, I don't see him, I see him making top five, but I don't see him leapfrogging up to the top two or three, um, no matter what he does, but who knows, I mean, even with an approved package, if he brings it, and somebody's off, he could bump up some placings. Um, number six, Dexter Jackson, he's probably always around the same placings now, ever since he, um, you know, had won the Olympia and then lost it back to Jay again, he's consistent, but does he have the mass to compete with Compton, Roden, Wolf, Kai, Heath, I mean, even Phil... As you know, he would be the lightest one out of the ones I just mentioned. He's still bigger than Dexter, and he still has good symmetry, and he's still round, he's still full. So Dexter, consistent, yes, um, doesn't have the mass to be in that top five anymore. I don't feel unless the judging goes a different way again, like they did. I think it was two thousand and eight. I think he won the Olympia or something like that. I just see him not placing in top five unless he brings up the mass, which would be stupid because he could ruin his physique. He's the great, one of the greatest physiques of all time. So I got him in a solid six, number seven. Victor Martinez. I got Victor in seventh place. Now, some people go, wow, he won the Arnold, and you know he's a former second place to Mr. Olympia, but this is not the Victor that we see anymore. Okay, Even though he just won the Tampa Pro a couple days ago, there were comparisons on some form. I think it might have been Get Big. There were comparisons of him before and now, and there's a different look. I mean, Victor's getting older. He's doing as much as he can with the physique that he has, the injuries. And like you said, you're never the same after an injury. You have to work around it and do your best, which he's doing, but it's like Jay. When he tore his bicep, his back wasn't the same. He couldn't pull with those heavy rows anymore to get the thickness. So Victor's lacking certain things that he didn't have before. Now, he looks great. He looks better than he's ever looked, you know, in the last, you know, three or four years. But he's not the Victor of old. And even though he's big, he doesn't have that sharp look like the other guys in the top five are going to have. The sharpness is just not there. Could he get it? Hopefully, because I love Victor. He's a great guy. I've met him plenty of times, hung out with him. Nice guy, and you always want to see this guy do well. I want to see Victor take an Olympia, at least one Olympia. I want to see him do it just because of who he is, but it's not based on how great you are at popularity contests. It's based on your physique, and I see Victor in that seventh spot. Number eight. Now, this is one I'm like, here already. Boo. Big Rami. Yes, Big Rami. You got boo. Rami's going to win. Rami's, Rami is the next Mr. Olympia. Rami does not have the separation those other guys do. When they stand next to him on stage... They exploit that in him very, very well. Now, you know, he beat Victor at the New York Pro, but again, we're talking about a Victor that's a subpar Victor who, although he's better than he was, he's still not um, still not the Victor of old. So the sharpness, the guy's big as, as big as anybody on the fucking planet, bodybuilder-wise, but he doesn't have that sharpness. And I've known guys in the past that had that mass that never got that sharp look. People say, oh, muscle maturity, muscle maturity. Ah, I don't know. You know what I mean? There's... You know, the guy's lean. His skin is thin. 
Does he just not have the actual striated look to the muscle? Does he not actually have that hard look to the muscle itself? You know, people before were going, oh, it's because he was using Dream Tan, and that covered up some of the, the muscularity, which the Dream Tan does skew some of the muscularity sometimes. But you know what? As big and as hard as he's gotten before, he looks great in a second-tier show. You know, like, uh, you know, I shouldn't say second. Top tier is the Olympia and the Arnold. Those are the top two. And then down from there, there would be the New York Pro and, Stuff like that. So it's not a bottom tier of a second tier, whatever tier show. But it's, you know, the, Olymp the New York Pro is not the Olympia. Those are not the competitors. Phil's not there. Kai's not there. Wolf is not there. You know, these guys are not there to compare him to. So we'd have to wait and see what he brings. But I saw him two weeks out from a show at the Pittsburgh. And Phil hadn't even been to fucking training, really, or dieting. And Phil was just as lean as him. Rami was bigger. Well, he's always fucking bigger. But he was two weeks out from a show. He should have fucking been bigger. But I just don't see him cracking that top five again. Um... I could be wrong. He could bring a shredded physique to the stage and fucking crush everybody. But until that happens, if we see the Rami that we're used to seeing, I got him at a solid eighth. Um, I got ninth, um, Juan Morrell. I think that, you know, although he's got a great physique, his height, size-wise, he gives up a little bit to these guys compared to the, the actual mass itself. Um, I don't see in tenth, I, I'll be totally honest with you, I don't see tenth, I have Branch Warren. Now, I, again... Love Branch. He's a nice guy. He's a hardworking guy. He's a positive guy. He's intense all the time. And he has taken his physique where I think that, you know, it really can't go any further than this without getting even uglier. You know, his symmetry is as good as it's ever going to be. He's as big as he's ever going to be. And he never has a problem with conditioning. He's hard. I mean, one year I think he had a conditioning issue. But he's hard as nails all the time. And they've been sending that, direct, that distinct message out to him at the Olympia that, you know, he doesn't have what they want Olympia-wise. You know, he may be able to win another show, another pro show, hands down, because the, the competition is not the same, but he just he doesn't have the, what they're looking for anymore. And that sucks because, again, Branch is one of those guys, just like Victor Martinez, you would love to see win a show because of who he is based on his work ethic and, you know, what a nice guy he is and stuff like that. And, you know, like I said, I've interacted with Branch many times. And he's always been very, very cool to everyone around him. Never seen him be a dick ever. Doesn't mean he's not a dick, but never seen him be a dick ever. But I just don't see him cracking that top seven or eight spots. Um, and in 11th, I think, where we're at right now, is that William Bonet guy. Okay, the guy who just placed second at the Tampa Pro to uh, Victor Martinez. Now, he also won a show this year. And this guy is short. He's very short. I mean, shorter than Branch. So... Do I see him being able to duke it up with those guys? I don't. I, and I'm only saying that because, <clears throat> you know, he doesn't have the mass. He's got some cuts, and he looks so thick that his symmetry is actually a little bit off. Like, he may carry a, a certain pound of muscles, poundage of, of muscle on his frame, but symmetry-wise, he doesn't have that flowing symmetry. He looks a little compact because of his frame compared to the other guys. And when he steps on stage at these other shows, it's good enough. However, the Olympia is not these other shows. These are the best in the absolute fucking world, hands down, and some of them have won Olympias themselves, so they've been there a long time, you know, and some of these guys, like Roden, have won fucking multiple, multiple shows in one fucking year's approach, means that, you know, these guys are the top tier, so I have him in 11th place, so those are my picks, they may be completely off, they may be fucking dead on, we'll have to wait and see who shows up, <clears throat> excuse me, who's 100% and who's off, if anybody is off, if anybody is 100%, we'll have to see those things, these placings should change you know, on the day of the Olympia based on who hits it and who doesn't. So, for what it's worth, those are my picks. Training at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is a blog and where is my Olympia picks bicep. We'll see you there. And we're out.